Hello, welcome to another great car basic um, training session. This time it's uh, part four, and part five is using the software to, with program logic to set some LEDs and to um, control those LED statuses with um, a potentiometer. So let's have a look at um, where, what we've covered so far. Very quickly, we've installed the Great Car Basic and to make some LEDs operate. We've um, made two LEDs flash. Uh, yesterday, we did um, two LEDs off and on using a switch, and that's what's on my desk now. And then today, we're going to use a potentiometer to control four LEDs. Are so either going to be on or off, depending upon the position of a potentiometer. I'll show you what a potentiometer is in a minute. We have um, connected up the PIC to the programmer. I've got some other programmers here. Let me just get some down very quickly. Good question was asked on the, on the wire. What does a programmer look like? It looks like this. I have got so many of them. I get sent them. Okay. Programmer looks like this. Okay. Uh, there we go. That's it. That's in the camera. A programmer could look like this. And these are clones. Look. These are programmers. Little dongles. These are legitimate programmers for microchip. This is one that we've designed. Okay. All right. So these are all different programmers. You move on. Uh, we, we're using, and I've spoken about this in the past, we're using a, a, a 16F um, 18313. It has eight legs, and they do different things. And this was the what we were using yesterday. We were using this to um, set the switch state. So let's have a quick look where we were yesterday. This is where we were yesterday. I pushed the button. And the LED came on and off. Oh, we're going to throw that away now because we're finished with that. Um, because um, what Chris has done is defined another one, little model for us. And this is the new one. Okay. And what we've got is four LEDs standing vertically, switch on the right hand side, and um, a potentiometer. And it's a better layout. And as I said, we're going to rotate this potentiometer to make these four LEDs flat, um, flash, uh, have a status of on or off. So what we're going to do we're is do. I might as well go straight into the lab to show you. This is a potentiometer. They look like this. They look like this. These have five volts coming in one or v, uh, the voltage, your supply voltage on one side, your um, zero volts or ground on the other, and then you read this side into the digital port. Um, I have another one. It's blue one. Is my pot. Okay, and I'm just going to connect this up to show you how it works today. I've got it working. I've put the code in already. We've got four LEDs. One's very bright. Um, one's very bright. And as I rotate the pot, it goes on or off. And and so what we're going to do over the next few days is we're going to make these LEDs do all sorts of different things. Okay, so this is a really good layout so that we can see it. We can even hook this up to the scope now. So Chris has done a great job on um, doing this board. Okay, all right. So I'll put the uh, diagram of the board up. But essentially for today, business logic is take read the potentiometer value on this particular port here, and then. Um, set it on or off depending if it's up past the midpoint okay so let's go over to um Synrite, to the editor to see what we're what we're going to be doing okay so a couple of things that we need to look at uh, in, in this is Synrite. for those who haven't seen it that's Synrite. okay there we go um i have it zoomed in a bit better so we can see the whole thing now let me just um walk you through this code so that we understand what's going on same as yesterday um specify the chip and op option explicit very good practice now we've defined um some more different constants led one two three and four and we can now refer to the leds not by um color but by number and they're on ports one two four and five notice they're not contiguous they're not con they're not consecutive no, they're contiguous. Um, 
The switch is on RA3 and this potentiometer is on RA0. Now, we then need to set some ins and outs of those particular ports as we did yesterday. And we're going to put a pause on it there um, because we're just going to make sure that we've declared a variable. Okay, we have to declare a variable because we have declared option explicit. As in uh, the session on Monday, we have a, a, a do forever loop and that carries on forever here. And now we can say that we've got this new command called read AD. And this is the simple syntax. Um, you need to read the AD with a parameter. And that parameter is what the particular um, analog port you're reading. And we're going to put it in a value called ADC value. So here's the confusing part. Where did you get this from? Because this is a black art. Not really. If I double click the chip at the top, right hand mouse button, open data sheet. I can do it another way. IDE tools, G GCB tools, no, open data sheet. Double click it, shift F1, it opens the web page on the microchip website for you. So now if I click that data sheet, um, I, am, I need to uh, go back because I just need to show you that on the desktop. There we are, the desktop. Um, select data sheet and it opens it up for you. Now, if you just look down in here, you can see a description of the part, and some parameters around the devices, uh, and then the shapes. But in here, look, it says RA0. And that's where we have it connected. We do have it connected to that port, but it doesn't tell us uh, what is the name. We need the name of the ADC port. But what we do, you get this table. It's always a table, a pin allocation table. And look in here, the first item is on RA0 is ANA0. A-N. Look, zoom in for you. Let me get zoom in properly. This is what we want here. RA0, ANA0. And that's what we need to put inside of here. This parameter that we're going to pass it is... A and zero. So I'm zooming in on um, soon right so we can see that for you. There we go. I'm going to put that in there. And then that's it. That's everything done because we set up the ADC port for you and you can just read that value in and um, the equi equivalent voltage on that port is put in, in here. So if I program that up, pop out to the lab because we can assume it's programming because I know that you trust me. We've now got the program in here. And if you don't believe me, very quickly, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to Synrite, because some people think this is all smoke and mirrors. I'm actually going to change LED4 and, in, and invert, oh no, I'll invert two of them. Look, okay, all right. Look at that. I'm going to program that. There we go. It's programmed it. Why can't I see the code in here? Oh, there we go. Look, as I now rotate that potentiometer, I'm getting them two of them. And that's what we did. We said to them, if it's less than 128, put two on. And if it's greater, then put the other two on. Wow, look how cool that is, okay? So we, we can now read a potentiometer and later on we're going to get the value of the potentiometer and we're going to display it on these four LEDs because we can do that. Okay. All right. That's good. I have been nearly 10 minutes. That's what I wanted to show you today. Okay. So what have we seen today? We've seen new PCB. Let's have a look at the PCB, PCB to make sure that we've got that sorted in our brains. New layout is this. Um, it's extremely simple. Um, We've got um, connect the pit kit at the top. We've got the right orientation here, and this is what we're going to be using. Okay, and I'll put that diagram out. Um, and with that, I think we're going to call it a wrap. With this, um, looking at that code, very very simple stuff. Okay, all right, let's uh, call that a wrap.